Hi, I'm Dionne Alfonsi, creator of the Project Jumpstart Weight Loss Program, which evolved from my ranking as the number one nationwide leader of the Bally Total Fitness Total Results Group Weight Loss Program. And having been in the fitness industry since 1997, I actually have multiple certifications as a group fitness and yoga instructor, a personal trainer, and a nutrition specialist. And I'm also the former owner and creator of the DFIT by Diana Fitness and Wellness Studio. And the reason I am reaching out to you today is because I want to talk about how to know for sure that we're eating the right amounts of food. So perhaps you are already on your weight loss journey, your body transformation journey, but you need to um, be more sure about your portion sizes. I find that all too often we tend to eyeball it or kind of guess and we think and we hope. And you know, perhaps if you are tracking your foods and you're entering it into your food log, you're not quite sure how much you have. So you just take your best guess. Uh, but what I have found is um, if we are off a little bit here and there, it can actually add up uh, a lot more than you think. And so, you know, I'd hate to see you not getting your results simply because your portions are a little bit different from what you thought they were. So, here are the tools I recommend. Um, I absolutely recommend a food scale. So, I want you to be able to kind of see what I have here. And I do not recommend the food scales. You know, have the bucket with the needle and then you just kind of, um, I just find that they're not as accurate and you still have to guess a little bit exactly where the needle is pointing and what if it's between uh, certain readings. So I tend to prefer the digital version just to take the guesswork out of it. Uh, the other things that I would recommend, um, whichever scale you do choose to buy, um, I don't know if you can see this here. So see where it says pound and kilograms. And so that gives you the option to switch uh, between ounces and grams. And I definitely recommend that. And this here, this button right here, that zero button, uh, or it might say tear, something like that. Um, I'll show you how to use that in just a minute. Now this particular scale, if I would have something big or oversized on it, it actually has the ability to pull this out. Um, I don't know that I've ever had to use that feature, but it's there. And my first food scale, I had a coupon for Bed Bath & Beyond, and I think it cost me, I don't know, about $15, $20. And I had that food scale for years. I, I think literally about three or four years uh, before I had to get another one. And so you really can get these pretty inexpensively, and it is well, well worth it. Uh, the other tools that I recommend are measuring spoons and a set of measuring cups. And if you do not have these already in your kitchen, then put this on your to-do list right away and this week, go out and get them, okay? I'm telling you, you're going to make your life easier, okay? So um, I wanted to give a couple tips on using the food scale. One of the ways um, we're gonna demonstrate here, this is uh, sour cream. And I am going to put this on my scale. Now I'm going to turn my scale on and I'm going to make it go to zero. So I hit the zero button, it may say tear on your scale. And what I found in a case like this is it's actually easier to measure what I scoop out rather than measuring what I put in. So for example, all right, so I just took the lid off now and I need to zero it out again because that changed uh, the weight that was on the scale. And from here, I know that I want to have about maybe 30 grams of this, so I'm actually gonna take my spoon, scoop it out, and now I can see on the scale, right now it says uh, minus 27 grams. So if I want to scoop out a few more grams, I can, and now I'll throw my sour cream into whatever it is that, I, that I'm making. So that's good to do, uh, for example, if you're working with um, peanut butter or something like that, sometimes it's easier to measure what you're taking out of the container rather than trying to measure uh, what you're putting on something. So that's tip number one. Uh, tip number two is sometimes you may have something that requires multiple ingredients. So what you can do is take your bowl, put it on the food scale, and again I have to zero it out. and now I have my first ingredient that I'm putting into the bowl. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to measure, make sure it's the amount that I want, 
take away some if it's too much, add some if it's too little. Once I know I have that ingredient correct, then I will go ahead, hit zero again. So now I have both items on the scale. It just zeroed out, so it's, I know you can't see it, but it says zero on my display screen. And now I'm going to take my second ingredient. So here we go. I now have my second ingredient there, and now I can measure what that second ingredient should be. And when I'm all done, then I take it off, and then I have whatever it is that I'm with multiple ingredients that I'm trying to make. So those are just a couple of my quick tips. I hope you find them helpful. And what I would love for you to do is to comment below. So below the blog, you should see a comment section. And please let me know um, what you decided to do as far as maybe what kind of food scale you got. I do know that there are some that actually have a database built in that can give you an idea how many calories are in certain foods. So there's really a lot of options where those go. And maybe you can let us know what you picked and what you liked about it so that other people who see the comments uh, can pick up some ideas as well. And also, if you found another tip or found something helpful, please let us know that too. All right, thank you so much. Again, this is Deanna Alfonsi, and you can visit my blog at blog.d-fit.com. Here's to you and fun and fitness, and have a great day.